Uh, yeah, hello, this is Dave from CheapBooks.com playing World of Tanks. The tank is the FV4202. This is a British Tier 8 medium tank, and the map is Pro Korovka. I am going to get 5 kills in this game. I'm going to do 1960 damage and 1200 EXP. Uh, my favorite position on almost every map is in the center of the map. Uh, you'll notice that I'm driving through the bushes. If a spotter comes over the edge, I want to be in the bushes to decrease the chance that I get spotted. I don't play where the WZ is going. I used to play there, but now I play in a new position, which is on this little mound over here. And the reason why is you've got these houses in front of you that offer you extra protection. And you can still snipe on the enemy, and you have a little bit more awareness as to what's going on the right, which is the west side. And in fact, I've also discovered today that if you play where that rock is, or where this dead tank is, and beyond there, you still get good coverage of the hill. The yellow circle really covers the hill well over here, and you can get it there too. Nice shot on his uh, lower plate area. Now when you shoot, obviously you've got a reverse. Uh, you want to know if there's artillery in the game. There's no artillery in this particular game. Um, from certain positions, depending on how high you are, if you're on the, the top, maybe you can hit on the west side. But it's still very difficult. Usually you can only hit the west side if they're high up along the red line, such as my allies over there. You'll note that our team has not spotted anybody on the hill. It's very important that you spot people on the hill so that your allies can take shots at them. Now you'll note that I was able to hit the west side just by moving over a little bit more. I've got the rock in front of me and uh, for a little bit of extra protection and I'm always checking all of my directions. I'd, I'd rather use the auto and see if I were using the sharpshooter mode I might not have noticed that tank sneaking up on me. So you gotta be you have to have great situational awareness. You really have to pay attention to what's going on. That's why I prefer to use the auto-aim lock-on and zoom out. You'll notice that we've got tanks up on the hill now. This is an example where you probably want to shoot manually to increase the chance you hit them. Depending on how fast the tank is moving. Playing in the middle, you have to constantly look back and forth. And the other thing about the auto-aim is that it will move... You know, you want to make it so that you just go enough above the hill to be able to hit the distant tank. That's why you shoot at distant tanks as a priori priority over the closer tanks. Uh, the distant tank... Um, I expose less of my tank shooting the tank in the distance. In order to hit these guys that are closer, I have to go high up on this hill, which means they can hit back at me. So you always want to prioritize those guys in the distance. I got two kills. Notice that a shot came in from the distance, which was probably the T-37. It's a very risky maneuver, but I do have a lot of allies in the area. And he obviously doesn't notice I'm flanking him. You want to go as low as possible in this area. Note that I'm going to spin my tank to put my frontal armor towards the enemy. And enter and, and go as low as possible so his allies in the, in the flanks can't shoot at you. When you crest the hill, you always want to try and do it with a bush in front of you shoot at the tank that has the least number of hit points. If you don't have a clear shot, switch to the auto-aim. I'm sorry, the sniper mode. You see, I'm looking around as I'm uh, aiming at him. I'm looking at the other targets. I use the auto-aim and pick the first target, and while I'm waiting for it to reload, I'm already looking for my second target got four kills, we're way ahead. Look at the mini-map. I once saw a game where there was like 
15 of us swarming in on one tank on Mountain Pass. It was an amazing view on the minimap. And four of us all fired our shots at the same time. And all you see four laser lights coming in at the enemy, and I'm the one that got the kill. Okay. So I didn't get that uh, kill, unfortunately. And that's the game. I just killed random player, the IS-2. So I got five kills. That's the FV-4202. This is a British Tier 8 medium tank. The map is Prokhorovka. It looks like I did that, I'm assuming, with mostly regular rounds. I wasn't keeping track. Um, I did put the Hunter with the Pirate on the side. I don't recommend it right now because they don't, they're they going to do a bonus system and they haven't uh, added it to the game yet. So I'm going to wait until... They added to the game. I, I was going to put this on every tank, but uh, I've changed my mind. I'm going to wait. Um, in terms of the FV-4202, do I think it's a great medium tank? I would have to say that there's better medium tanks out there. For example, I would recommend a Panzer Mutz. If you're going to buy a medium tier 8 tank, I would recommend the Panzer Mutz over this tank. Uh, maybe even the Super Pershing. Um, there's there's a, a lot, a large number of tier eight medium tanks. Um, this is kind of like medium so-so. It's it's 35 kilometers. It's a little bit slow. Um, the reload time is is not fast. Let's see what the penetration is. Uh, 226, 258. It's kind of moderate. Uh, the damage is reasonable. Um, the Chinese uh, Tier 8 medium tank you might like, and the Japanese, you know, you should really investigate all those tanks. I don't think this is going to be your first choice if, if you're buying a Tier 8 uh, medium tank. In terms of training my crew, I, I think it does an excellent job. I train my crew very quickly. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please post below.